Hey, hey, Dr. Robin McKay here. Why, Robin, why are you wearing your workout clothes today for the weekly weather report? Well, let me tell you, I decided about mm, two and a half weeks ago that I was going to get my body back and build some muscle and kind of shift the way that I am in the world. And I called my personal trainer who I've worked with pretty regularly for the last 10 years and said, I want to do five in one week. I want to do four sessions in the next week and so on. And I really wanted to just have really an intense focused approach to my physical well-being at this time. And he agreed. So I did have time to curl my hair and do makeup, but I'm in my workout gear still because I just got back from the gym and I had a real hard workout. I just got back from San Jose del Cabo and Cabo San Lucas yesterday. I was there with my husband for a few days, kind of a long weekend of working in the morning and then playing and swimming in the Sea of Cortez in the afternoon. And I was really excited to share a little bit about what um, I realized and what I noticed while I was there. And I will do that in a minute. If you're new to the Becoming the Channel Insiders Facebook group, welcome. So happy that you're here. You know, I'm a, an award-winning psychologist and I'm an intuitive and I work with top leaders in tech, including women engineers, and in healthcare, including women physicians, along with spiritual entrepreneurs on all things related to wealth consciousness, burnout recovery, and pretty much anything that meets at the intersection of how smart you are and how creative you are. That's my, that's my space. Somebody was teasing me the other day on Instagram. I have a, in my bio, I'm the queen of self-actualization and naps. I love naps. So that's me. And if you want to stay in touch with me more, I would love that. I send out daily messages from your future self. So I've been channeling these messages for a long time. I get them. You can get them too. If you can imagine talking to your future self and seeing what they have to say about your life, about advice and wisdom that they're sending you right here. And now there's nothing like receiving those on text messages. If you want to do that, we're going to pop the uh, phone number, the text number into the comments that you can do that and just text message future self, all one word to the number below in the comments. And we will get you sorted with that. I want to see if I can find that number real quick. And if you're with me live, say hi. Oh, you did already. Hi. I don't know who that is. I see Facebook user over here, but it's nice to see you live. If you're watching the recording, say hi and do the same. I love to come back in here and see who's watching. It looks like we've got Amanda and Lee are on today. I'm just seeing this on my other screen. Hang on just a second. Let me tell you what that number is. It's 1-855-545. 545 hang tight hang tight here it is 545 0810 1855545 0810 text message future self all one word to that number and you'll start getting text messages from your future self tomorrow so listen i was so i was in San Jose del Cabo for about five days. And I have to tell you, it's about a two hour flight from Phoenix where I live, but it's kind of like walking into another realm in some ways, you know, it is a resort town in Mexico. So it is very much service oriented. There are a lot of Americans who go there. It's kind of a magical place though. In fact, on my Instagram stories, I no, sorry, on my Instagram reels, I did a reel on this place that we went to for dinner. It's called Flora Farms. It's a working farm and they turned it into this beautiful farm to table restaurant, lots of cutie shops, things like that. But literally I felt like I'm always looking at what's the, the frequency, what's the metaphysical experience that I'm having in addition to my physical, physical experience. And it's at the end of a dirt road, nothing fancy, but literally walking onto the property felt like I was walking into another realm like Avalon or Brigadoon or one of those sort of mythical, mythical places that has been written about for generations. And 
in some ways, I did feel like I was walking around on the new earth. There were sunflowers and cats and dogs and lots and lots of happy people. And that by far is the general tenor of that area of the world is just this underlying sense of joy that, um, that kind of underpins all of the experiences. But there is also a big contrast, of course, between the people who are visiting on vacation and then the people who live there, the local people who live there and work. But I was reading in an article about from somebody who has moved there. She's an American who moved to, um, I think, Cabo San Lucas, actually. And she said that one of the reasons that she did was because it's such a different experience for her than any other place that she's been. She had lived in Mexico City for a while as well. And she said that a lot of the people who come to that region, it's the Baja Peninsula of Mexico, they go there for a better life. They go there because they want to create something new and better for themselves. Interestingly, Cabo San Lucas and that the whole Baja Peninsula is actually the largest producer of salt on the planet. And they have a big um, copper mine as well. Well, from a physical perspective, we know that salt is really good for our systems, contrary to what the FDA might have told you, and that copper is a wonderful conductor of energy. So I thought that was very interesting as well. In the time that I spent swimming in the Sea of Cortez, I just felt so many just powerful activations coming through. I don't think that there were necessarily words associated with those activations, but just a sense of an overall sense of well-being, an overall sense of reassurance that more is possible, that better is coming. So I wanted to share that. Have you been to Cabo San, Lu San Lucas, Cabo San Lucas or San Jose del Cabo? I'd love to know. I know one of our, our members here in this group is in, um, in the capital of that area. And um, that was fun to, to learn that as well. So today on with the show, now that I've caught you up on my life, how are you? Did you guys have a good weekend? Listen, um, today, every Tuesday, I do energy reports. And this time I was guided to do something a little bit differently. I usually don't pay a lot, a lot of attention to astrological conditions, quite frankly, because I'm not trained as an astrologer at all. I used to read the astrology columns when I was a little kid. And then, of course, as an adult, I like, I like learning about astrology. But apparently it's Mercury retrograde. And I was thinking about like, how can we use this time? And somebody just had suggested, I just saw this, somebody had suggested that we start looking at what archetypes are active, what archetypes are we actually channeling? Since we are a community that is working toward and learning how to become the channel for wealth consciousness, it would then stand to reason that we would want to activate and align with key archetypes in our systems that are that are supportive of our wealth consciousness. So I've pulled some cards from Carolyn Meese's deck, um, archetype cards, very simple card deck. And I wanna share a couple with you. So remember with archetypes, these are the ones that the guides are telling me we wanna talk about today. That one, and this one. Okay, so they gave me four cards that we're going to talk about today. With archetypes, there are always shadows and light to the archetype. So there are positive aspects of it and also sort of aspects that can be more shadowy or difficult to deal with. So we want to take into consideration both of those. But when you really are looking at self-actualization, you're just wanting to make sure that you are channeling and aligned with archetypes, with frequencies, with energies that are in the service of where you want to head. You know, there's an old saying that doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result is a definition of crazy making. And I think so too is the case when we can kind of get on the gerbil wheel and we just do the same thing and we be the same way and we don't change what we're doing and we just go through the motions, we can be on that rat wheel of experience. It can be boring and it certainly doesn't accelerate the, the self-actualization trajectory. But when you're actively deciding what archetype am I going to be paying attention to? What archetype am I going to be tuning into and channeling through me? 
Um, that is an empowering perspective. That is a decision that you can make for yourself. And it is a conscious decision, which is supportive of the desire to self-actualize, the desire to expand wealth consciousness and so on. So let's see what we have. The first one is mentor. So this is an archetype that often, especially in our community, we refer to ourselves often as mentors. I got my start way back early in my career as a mentor for young women who are pursuing STEM fields. And so in keeping in the spirit of the shadow and the, the light of each of these archetypes, what we, can, what we know for sure about the mentor is that there's a light aspect, the light aspect of the mentor is passing on wins, wisdom and helping a student to refine their character or to refine their skills. So that's the that's the light aspect of it. And the shadow attribute of the mentor is the inability to allow the student to move on to the role of master or also imparting false wisdom. So in becoming a clear channel, we have to really pay attention to what we're channeling and how much in our, in our circles right now, we're referring to this as false light. Um, within the wider frame of the ascension process, what we've been seeing for the past few years is that there are a tremendous amount of, tremendous number of leaders in this field who to some degree are channeling some false light. They're telling two truths and a lie, for example. And um, so we really have to be mindful about that. We have to pay attention to what frequencies we're channeling, why we're channeling them, and what our, what our uh, um, ultimate intention is. And if the ultimate intention, as it is in my case, is to, to usher in the new earth, to create what's next, to be in the highest service of my, my community, to be in the highest service of the world, then that is going to be in the most alignment with my soul's path and with the path that the creator has, has laid out for me. Um, but, you know, our egos can get in the way. The shadow aspects of us can get in the way. The fear can get in the way. The manipulation can get in the way. The narcissism can get in the way. And that's when the shadows come forward. And, you know, with the mentor, of course, what, what the guides just want to just reiterate is that you have to be really mindful as a mentor of knowing when it's time to make the transition from for the student to make the transition, to allow the student to continue to grow. And I think in spiritual entrepreneur land, especially, we run into this, like wanting to keep clients with us for a the highest purpose, which is that they continue to evolve as we evolve, but also being able to recognize when is it time for a student to complete? When is it time for a student to let go? And it doesn't have to be a big crisis and it doesn't have to be a big drama. It can just be complete. So in the if you're choosing to channel the mentor this week, this year actually, what I would say is take a look at how, you know, what's the best way for me to pass wisdom on to my students? And also, how do I know when it's time to graduate the students? When is it time for me to understand that it's time to let them fly? Because really what that's what mentoring is all about is giving them roots and wings. And then also really being super discerning about your own what information you're channeling. I channel all of my information through the Akashic records and beyond. I know I just sounded like Buzz Lightyear, sorry. But um, the Akashic records being truth, ultimate truth and light allows me to really discern what is true from what is false and being able to, to tease apart those things and to be able to get as clear as possible on what I'm saying and how I'm saying it for the highest good. And you can learn how to do that too. So that's the mentor. The guides like to surprise me. Let's do this one. Okay, the next one is the mystic. Another archetype that is often used in our community is the mystic. And according to this particular model of understanding archetypes, the light attribute of the mystic is to reveal, in to revel, excuse me, to revel in intimate, union with the divine. 
to seek oneness with the divine. The Catholic mystics like St. Teresa of, I think it was Avalon, is actually shown, there's a, there's a painting of her shown in ecstasy. And it is in that she's a mystic and she's in connection with the divine in that ecstatic moment. But the shadow attribute for the mystic is having a delusion, a delusion of rapport with the divine. So again, we really have to tease apart what part am I, am I channeling shadow or light of the mystic? We can channel both. And we want to move into the place. If you're choosing to work with the mystic archetype, you want to move into the place where you're channeling light and you're discerning the relationship for the highest and best of yourself, your community, and for your connection with the divine. That's the mystic. Then we have the visionary, another one that is very key in our community is a visionary. The light aspects of the, the visionary are the capacity to envision what is not yet conceivable to others and the willingness to proclaim a vision without regard for personal gain. One of the greatest challenges with all of the visionary people that I work with, and I work with a lot of you all, I see this in your neo personality profiles, this very high openness to experience, this very high level of imagination, where you can see beyond what other people can see. And one of the greatest challenges is that other people can't see what you can see. And it becomes very frustrating and sometimes even disheartening when you just want somebody to be able to see what you can see. But the gift of the visionary is to proclaim the vision without regard for personal gain. And I would add to that without worrying about if people think you're crazy. My dad always says, whoever carries the vision leads the way. And I think that this is such a valuable reminder if you're channeling the visionary, um, the visionary archetype. Now, here's the shadow. Are you ready? This is a tough one. Selling insights to the highest bidder and compromising your vision to make it more acceptable. How many times have you compromised your vision? Well, I see this thing and then you go into the yeah buts of why it's not possible or you start listening, you start sharing your vision and then people can't see what you can see. So then you start compromising your vision in order to accommodate the ego's need to be liked, to be believed in. I think one of the greatest fears that a visionary has is that people won't believe us. And one of the greatest gifts that I give, I think I give my, my clients is that I don't just believe in them. I believe them. So when they have a vision, because you're a visionary, you would have a vision. I just believe you. And it helps that I'm a visionary too. So I can actually see what you're seeing as well, but really taking a look at that from a, the key here, I think is discernment. Are you noticing this thread? the discernment of, you know, what am I seeing? How am I seeing it? Am I willing to proclaim what I see, even if other people can't see it or don't believe me? Or am I channeling more of the shadow side of it, which is I'm going to sell my vision. I'm going to hold my vision. And I'm going to sell it to the highest bidder. Or I'm going to compromise my vision in order to fit in, in order to maintain the status quo in order to not rock the boat. That's a very debilitating place for the vision to be. So if you're choosing to channel visionary right now, take a look at what side of this are you on? And we want to get really crystal clear about what the vision is and being able to hold the vision, even if others can't see it. In fact, I don't know where I learned this, but you actually only need like 10% of people to be able to see what you can see. That's it. So, right. So in a room of a hundred people, you only need 10 in a room of 10 people. You just need one other person to believe in you, to not just believe in you, but to believe you, to be able to see your vision. And then the others will follow along to some degree. If another person is also on board with it, there's a wonderful video. It was done. It was shot years ago uh, for a Ted talk and it's called lessons from the shirtless dancing guy, lessons on leadership from the shirtless dancing guy. And we'll link that in the comments because it's such a good video 
on transforming what the what the narrator calls the lone nut, the the naked dancing guy or the shirtless dancing guy, when another person comes along and starts to dance with them. And then they watch this entire crowd join in. And that is really the beginning of a movement. It starts with one, it starts with you. But you have to have the vision and you have to be willing to look a little bit nutty, a little bit different than most people in order to bring the vision to life. All right, last one is the liberator. When I talk to people about freedom, when I talk to them about what they want in their lives, often what they will say is that I want more freedom. I want the freedom to just be myself. I want the freedom. I want to liberate myself from the nine to five. I want to liberate myself from my marriage or whatever it is that they're wanting to free themselves from. That was my ADHD. I just dropped a crystal on the ground. If you heard that drop. So the liberator, the light attributes, here's the liberator, the light attributes of the liberator, freeing yourself and others from outmoded beliefs and releasing negative thought patterns. But the shadow attributes are actually imposing your own tyranny over those you claim to liberate and ignoring legitimate constraints. So I want to just, I'm going to let that hang there because we can say that we want freedom. We can say that we want to be liberated. In fact, that's some of the deeper energy work that I do with clients is liberating them from the status quo and helping them tap back into the field of infinite possibilities, helping them tap back into the field of sovereignty, releasing the the perceived constraints, the shackles of servitude, the shackles of time, the shackles of work, hard work, grit, tenacity, those kinds of energies hold you bound in this matrix that would deplete you. And then liberating you from that energetically is actually the best way to rise into the frequencies that you most want to experience as a freedom, sovereignty, sacred autonomy. All right, so those are the four. Let's see, do we have time? All right, so those are the four today. If you found this helpful, say so in the comments. Tell me which of the archetypes are you wanting to start channeling? And what was your number one takeaway from our time together? All right, that's all I have for today. I'm going to see you next week on the next episode of this. If you're not following me, by the way, on Instagram, I have a separate Instagram account for Becoming the Channel. So we're going to kind of integrate these two. There's different content on both. So find me over on Instagram and we'll put the, the link in the comments to the Becoming the Channel podcast Instagram account. So you want to follow over there. And I just love you guys. I'm so happy that you're here with me. I'm so happy that you're part of this beautiful growing community. If you know somebody who you feel like would be a great addition to our community who is meant to be here with us, please invite them to join. Everybody is welcome at our table. All right. So I will see you next week.